Well, good morning, Bobcat T650, hydraulic charge pressure low, hydraulic charge pressure in shutdown. This machine lost all hydraulic functions, including drive and started coating out and shutting the engine down. So what's the first thing we check? Well, of course, when I arrive to the site, I check the hydraulic oil because I've had these where they blow a hose inside the machine and it never leaks a drop on the ground because there's so much mud and dirt in the bottom of the machine, you'll, you'll never even know that it blew a hose inside, believe it or not. So I check the hydraulic oil just as I drive up because it's quick and easy. Then the very next thing we check is the hydraulic drive belt. And I've got a, I'm gonna leave a link, of, link to a video right here to where we can, um, you can see the engine out of the machine and it shows you how to do that belt. But now we're gonna do a belt inside the machine. Now it is muddy and snowy, so I love these cheap Harbor Freight um, tarps here that I can just lay down and that just kind of keeps me out of the mud i also use one of the harbor freight moving blankets just to kind of have a place to put my knees because we got to get the battery out of this thing to kind of work in there and get the belt out so what we do is if we come in on this side of the engine way back there in the back I know it's kind of hard to see, but, but you can see it when you look in your machine if you have a broken drive belt. And this one, oh, if I can get my arm down in here, is basically right here. You can see it's already, it's come off the pulley. More than likely it's broken half. I'll try to drag it out of there so we can get a better look. In order to access that area, first thing we need to do is remove our battery. So it's not hard to do, but some models can vary the process I'm using my ratchet with a half inch mid-depth socket love these sockets gotta always make sure it's tight before you loosen it right get those secondary grounds out of the way Negative cable, now we gotta get our battery hold down out of the way. battery hold down now to get to the positive cable we just lift the battery up slide it out halfway and it just makes it easier to reach the positive cable and then we can remove our battery Now that I've got the battery out of the way, we've got the drive belt cover itself, just one half inch screw, or one bolt with a half inch head. I get that bolt off, I wanna pull this cover to me a little bit because it's on slotted screws and sometimes it is very difficult to get that cover to slide towards you and we might have to loosen the retaining screws themselves to get this cover out of there not always but sometimes and there's what our drive belt cover looks like and now we got access to our drive belt which yeah she's broke
This is a relatively low hour machine. What causes the belt to break? Well, there's no good answer for that, but first thing I do is check the tensioner pulley itself right here. And I don't find any play or slop in those bearings. So I think I can just replace the belt and put it back on. I don't know why this one broke. It could have been just a defective belt. So this bolt here is our tensioner stop lock bolt. I guess we can call it and sometimes it's a three quarter in this case it's an 18 millimeter or a 19 millimeter i guess in some cases so what we want to do is go ahead and loosen this bolt which will release our tensioner I should not have to loosen this center bolt. This plate should spin without loosening that bolt. I'm using my half inch drive ratchet see I can put in that slotted hole on this tensioner bracket right here well it's a square hole it's a little slotted but a half inch drive ratchet will go right in there and see I just pushed down and now I can raise my tensioner now I've got to get the tensioner all the way up and I just hand tighten that bolt that'll hold the tensioner until I can get another good bite with my ratchet raise it again raise it again okay so now it's all the way up I want to hold pressure down on my ratchet and I do want to tighten this bolt just a little bit so that, that thing doesn't fall down and, and break a finger oops I grabbed the three-quarter where's my 18 at right here If I can get my wrench in there. So now I've got the tensioner lock bolt tight and see it holds that tensioner all the way up in the open position so I can thread the new belt in there. Give it the old reach around there. and Right now I'm just looking to make sure that I've got the belt grooves in the grooves of the pulley on both the pump pulley and the flywheel pulley, the drive pulley itself. Now using my 18 millimeter, I'm just gonna loosen the stop a little bit and that tensioner is gonna spring down on top of the belt. Just like that. Now I'm going to take my stop and I'm going to pull. I'm pulling down on the stop, putting more pressure on the belt. Now Bobcat spec for that is 40 foot pounds. And I've done enough of these, I kind of know what the tension feels like. So I pull about 40 pounds pressure on that. And then I'm going to tighten my lock bolt again. So now that I got the drive belt in there and it's torqued 
intent. Now we just put our machine back together. Let's get the machine started and kind of take a look in there and make sure everything's functioning properly. difficult to see but everything is perfect I mean that belt is smooth as glass the tensioner isn't shaking bouncing around the belt didn't try to off track the pumps turning easy no squealing so I think we just had to affect the belt I mean it happens but but that's how we change just the belt now I'm still trying to get a video of a tensioner failed tensioner so we can do a full tensioner video and I've actually got another machine today. That's what happens when it starts snowing and getting cold is these belts break more often. But this is too new of a machine for that to have happened. Let's go see what the other machine has in store for us.